Hello Twin Flame friends, this is Charlotte with Happy Twins 1111, welcome to my channel. Now, before I begin today, um, we're going to do a reading about, um, well it's an energy update for the collective, for both the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine. But before I start, I want to talk about yesterday's video, because I understand that some of the comments and the down votes that a lot of the viewers um, found the tone of my messages harsh. And um, some of you described them as negative. And whilst I'm really sad that it's been received this way, I'm, you know, I must, of course, take on board that a great many of you were disappointed um, with how I addressed the, the, the messages that came through. So there are two sides to this coin. I mean, first and foremost, I, I am perhaps blunt by nature. I guess we all have a friend like that, someone who tells it how it is. So, you know, I must balance this call to develop more tact, more diplomacy with the fact that, you know, to a degree that, that this is who I am. And um, first and foremost, much like you would choose not to spend time with a person whose viewpoint didn't resonate with yours, you also have the freedom to choose not to watch my videos. Um, I can't please everyone, but I am addressing this and I am paying attention because a great many of you found how I spoke to be negative and I don't want to make anyone feel bad. So, you know, the other side of this coin is that I, I must and I do take responsibility for delivering my messages in a more sensitive manner. And um, I want to reassure you that I will definitely be more mindful of that in future. But above all else, my intention in posting videos here and um, sharing my channeled messages and my learning and insights comes from a place of love. It is my intention to support this collective, not, not to demoralise it. And I'm here to help you all. And whilst I will make efforts to address my tone, I also ask you to consider that I do post these videos from my heart. I give freely. I give in abundance. And I'm not a perfect person. I'm not a perfect twin. But I ask that when you wish to express your lack of resonance with my, my work that you also respect my contribution to this collective and speak from a place of love. Um, I received a lot of very abusive and harsh emails after posting that video. And to those people, I say this, it's, it's not my words that cause you pain. It's the part of your mind that agrees with those words. And blaming, judging, accusing or complaining, it's, that, that's not speaking from a place of love. My reading may have been blunt and to the point, but it wasn't mean. So, you know, never trust your tongue if your heart is bitter, no matter your view of my videos. To respond with such vitriol suggests that you're living in ego and that actually, perhaps the reason you reacted so strongly to my videos is because your ego, your ego even, couldn't handle the truth. And I, I didn't miss the irony of some of you stating that my video is negative, but your hateful words really evidence more negativity than anything I said in my video. So to those of you who did send me abuse, I send you love, I send you healing, and I wish only for you that you find peace. And I want to say that if you did resonate with the video, but still find my tone harsh, I'm truly sorry, I really am. There's no shame in feeling frustrated and angry with our twin. There's no shame in being, um, you know, just, I guess just frustrated, you know, there's no shame in being where you are in this journey. We've all been there, every single one of us. And even those of us, myself included, who have made good progress towards loving self, we still slip back, me included. You know, this journey is hard. It can be painful. So please understand that I'm, I'm not here to shame you. I think for all twins, one of the changes um, we feel on this journey is that we want to be around people who get it, the, the real story, all of us. We need people who get what we're going through, the good, the bad. And I'm aware that not many readers address the negative side of this story. But this is how I'm called to support the collective, to shine light on those parts of us that we need to heal and the darker energies that we need to transmute into, into positive light. And I believe we need to see this journey with deeper eyes to understand all of its layers, all of its dimensions, the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. It doesn't serve us to ignore that. Now, I am a really positive person. I don't advocate that we should ever dwell on negativity. My video yesterday communicated that this is what, um, you know, the viewer is doing. It communicated that this doesn't serve you. Being positive doesn't mean pretending that everything is okay. 
And, you know, many of us, we never analyse ourselves, but by evading self-analysis, we really do ourselves a huge misservice. True analysis is the greatest art of progress, true self-analysis. Now, to be able to find peace, we must understand that the whole world is inside us. We are one. To have peace, we must be at peace with ourselves first, to truly enjoy life and love ourselves, to not focus on lack. And once we master this... We, we can be protected from everything that makes us feel like we can't go on. Loving ourselves and choosing peace is the greatest gift. That's, that's what, why this journey is a gift. It teaches us that even when we, we think we're alone, we're never really lonely because the love inside us is enough. So I bring forward a message to remind you to look within, to be more aware of your own inner demons, to heal yourself and love yourself so that you can find that peace. Please accept it as a gift, not a shame, not as punishment. That's never, ever my intention. There, there's a quote by Eckhart Tolle that goes like this. He said, be present as the watcher of your mind, of your thoughts and emotion, as well as your reactions in various situations. Be at least as interested in your reactions as in the situation or person that causes you to react. Now, if you reacted strongly to my video, if you felt shame, understand shame is not what I communicated. What I communicated is truth and support and guidance as to how you can transmute that inner pain you are feeling. What I communicated is that you need to love yourself more. The hardest part about getting unstuck is admitting that we are stuck. It's admitting that we're stuck and deciding what to do to get ourselves unstuck. And finally, I want to remind you that I'm on this journey too. I know how hard it is. I truly understand that. I understand the ups and downs, the hurt the longing, the pain. I feel that too sometimes. I've been through it all. I understand it all. And I'm here to share what I've learned for the, for the benefit of all. If my messages and insights don't resonate with you, then by all means, let me know. I, I need to hear that. I want to hear that. But speak from your heart, not from your ego. And if you really just find my videos downright awful, if they make you feel bad, then I invite you to unsubscribe rather than wasting your energy watching something you don't enjoy and sending me horrible emails that are trying to encourage me to change to suit your perspective. I am who I am. I'm 40 years old. I've battled my whole life through pain, through self-loathing to reach a point where I don't just like me, I love me. And such is that love for myself that I no longer feel the need to diminish my own beliefs, my own values, to, to satisfy others. This channel is an expression of myself and my own understanding and my words come from the heart. So if they don't sound good to you, then um, please turn off, Mo move on to another reader who matches your vibration. And to those of you who reached out with love and support, thank you so much. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I'm so blessed and so honored to meet so many lovely people through this community and so privileged to serve you as best I can. So thank you, thank you so much for your words. It really meant so much to me. This journey is so magical in every which way, but for sure, because as a community, we support one another so beautifully, and that's where the real magic is. So thank you, it really does mean a lot. Now, I also want to address a really important question that came up yesterday. A lovely viewer messaged me and she said, you keep saying I've got to do the work, but what does that mean? And this is so important, so I really want to clarify what I mean when I say that. Doing the work means working on yourself. It means healing self. It means becoming aware of that negative voice inside your head that tells you that you cannot be happy without your twin. That voice that dwells in anger, that dwells in frustration, that voice that tells you you're not good enough. Now, most all of us have spent our whole lives bullying ourselves. When we look in the mirror, we react with revulsion. We tell ourselves we're too fat, we're too ugly. We tell ourselves constantly that we're not good enough. We give ourselves such a hard time. We would never speak to our friends like that or our loved ones. We, we wouldn't speak to anyone else the way we often speak to ourselves. So once we become aware of that negative inner voice, the goal, the work that I'm talking about is to make that voice positive, to talk to ourselves kindly. That's what self-love is. If a, if a small child expressed to you that they felt stupid or ugly, you would waste no time in telling them that they are beautiful just as they are. You would tell them lovingly that they are good enough. But we so often fail to, to soothe our own inner loathing this way. We, 
you know, the reality of our experience is a reflection of how we feel about ourselves and what we feel about ourselves. Everyone sees life in direct proportion to the clarity of their heart. We attract into our life a reflection of what we think, not just about ourselves, but about others as well. We, we also attract into our life what we judge. If we think people are dishonest, we attract dishonest people. If we think we are ugly, we attract judgment about being ugly. If we're focused on sickness or, or disease, we attract more of this into our lives. If we focus on pov poverty and lack, we gain nothing more than an empty bank account. Everything we hold in our conscious thought becomes our cage and our reality. So the work is seeing your abundance, see, see honesty, see good in all, see love, embrace what is good. If your thoughts create your reality, it's that simple. And that's our goal, our work. It's to master our own thoughts, to learn to talk to ourselves with love and kindness, to take all of that love that we send our twin and to turn it inwards, to give it to ourselves. Because when we are loving self, we are actually loving our twin. They are the other half of our soul. They are us. If we're communicating loathing to self, we're communicating that to our twin. This is how we trigger one another. We're connected in mind, body, heart and spirit. We're mirrors. That's what this journey teaches us. And loving our twin unconditionally when we first set out on this journey, it's initially very painful. And I later learned that, you know, until we develop that unconditional love for self, they will keep on running. And what I didn't realise in the beginning was that in loving him, in loving my twin, I was loving myself, the other half of my soul. It was a really long journey for me to find my way to, to the unconditional love inside of me. But by golly, it's been the most worthwhile journey I ever did take. And this is why I'm here. This is why I'm sharing this with you. Because I know your pain, but I've also learned how to transmute the pain. It's been the pain of longing for them that has driven me to do that inner healing and, and begin loving myself. And if I can reach just one person with these videos and help them learn this, then this will all be worthwhile for me. It's, it's in learning to love ourselves that we become free to really love others in real terms, unconditionally. And it, it's my belief that this is how we evolve into to greater, more civilized and compassionate human beings. Energetically speaking, if, if quantum physics teaches us that we are just energy vibrating at different levels, then love is the highest vibration of all. And the more of us that exist in love, the more loving we become as a collective. It will literally raise the vibration of the planet. When both twins reach a state of unconditional love, when they unite in that love, they inspire us all towards love, towards more love, just, just by being. But we have to find that love in ourselves first before our twins can accept our love for them. Energy doesn't lie. No matter how much we try and convince them of our love, if we don't hold that love inside of us for ourselves, they won't be able to accept our love. So this is what I talk about when I say that we must do the work. You have to love yourself, care for yourself. When you feel self-loathing, work hard to transmute those feelings back to love. This is what us readers mean when we say standing in your own power and holding your space. When you are in love with yourself, you will radiate love. You will radiate joy and light and your twin will be drawn to this like a moth to a flame. You know, we do that work by using affirmations and meditations. So science teaches us that meditation is just self-hypnosis. When we meditate, our brain goes into theta state, the same state that we experience under hypnotic trance. This is when our minds are at their most suggestible. And so this is when it's best to affirm your self-love, to say to yourself, I love and accept myself. And when we think, our brain powers up action centers. And this is what scientists refer to as, um, you know, these neural connections. When we think, our brain creates actions and behaviors to fulfill our thoughts. This is why when we're angry, when we're thinking of vengeance or spite, you know, when we're full of frustration for someone, we're pumped full of adrenaline and, and react with destructive behaviors. So the work that I talk about is learning to fill your mind with so much joy, so much love, so much light, that your energy and behavior is joy, love and light. This isn't just the path to union, this is the path to happiness. Now, 
I have created a meditation which helps embrace and love and release fear. If you're interested in receiving that, drop me an email and I will send it over. But, you know, just to kind of round this up, because I'm aware that I've been rambling for a while, I just want to apologise again. You know, I know I'm blunt. I know I'm blunt, but, you know, it is in part who I am. I do speak as I find. Some people find that really refreshing. Others don't like it. So um, I'm going to be more mindful of it in future. But, you know, if, if I don't resonate, just just turn off, okay? Save your vitriol. I, d- I don't need or want your mean emails. Um, and for those of you that have expressed love and thanks, then... I send so much love and thanks back to all of you, to those of you that that, that sent me the hateful emails as well. I still love and respect you, and I I hope you find peace on your journey. Okay. (laughs) All right, so let's get started. So I haven't done an energy update for a while. So if you've not seen these readings from me before, um, I choose the significator for the Divine Masculine on the left, the Divine Feminine on the right, and then we look at past present, future, and um, what you can do to move forward in this journey. Divine masculine is always on the left, divine feminine on the right, and the connecting energies are down the middle. Um, In terms of the future outlook, I think it's always important to say that, you know, the future is never set in stone because we all have free will. And the the benefits of being able to glance into the future in these readings and to get a glimpse of what may come to be is that we then have the power to change that. If it doesn't suit us, you know, it's a bit like a heads up. You know, if you carry on on this certain path, this is the result you're going to get. If you don't like the look of that result, then you have the free will to change your path. So I think it's really important to mention that. So let's get going. So we'll have a significator for the divine masculine, significator for the divine feminine. And remember, if I pause, it's because I'm channeling Arthur or I'm trying to curb my bluntness, <laughs> whichever comes first. And actually, do you know, now think about it, Arthur is quite blunt. Maybe I should channel my other guy, John, because Arthur's quite a cheeky chappy. He does say it how it is. Perhaps that's why he's my guide. We kind of vibrate at the same resonance. Um, Right. So let's look at the significators first. For the, for the Divine Masculine, we've got the King of Wands reversed. And for the Divine Feminine, we've got the Two of Cups. Now, for the Divine Masculine, in terms of the King of Wands reversed, you know, he's, he's really struggling um, to move forward right now. He's certainly in struggling with the spiritual concepts associated with this journey. And I feel like our Divine Feminine has certainly communicated that to him, and he may have rejected that. Don't feel disheartened, you know. Um, one realisation I did come to recently is that, you know, it, a lot of um, women find it very difficult to accept spirituality. And I know that when I first woke up and I started, um, you know, working as a light worker, um, having come from a very corporate background, I found it absolutely overwhelming to, to suddenly reveal to the world that I was this spiritual psychic worker it felt like coming out of the closet and um, it was really daunting and it occurred to me that you know if it's daunting for us girls it's it's even harder for men you know they're really full of machismo um, especially if we're dealing with a very alpha male which divine masculines always are because they really embody um, you know the, that masculine energy so you know you need to be um, a little bit more understanding with their, their lack of acceptance for a lot of these spiritual concepts. I would never advise that you reveal the twin flame concept to your twin. Um, 
especially if they're not spiritually awake or spiritually aware or not generally accepting of other spiritual ideals or sorry ideologies or theories because the, the, the twin flame journey is quite an out there concept so you know i feel like you have discussed spirituality with your divine masculine and he he's he's not been able to accept that um but the fact that um you know, this card has showed up, means he, he is thinking about it and he's getting his head around it, but he's overwhelmed right now. Um, he's, he's, you know, recalibrating and trying to allow the truth to sink in. Um, so, you know, he, he's in a hard place. And I think this card is really interesting. You know, upright, we see this um, hand accepting the, the salt of the earth with this beautiful... Um, vine growing from it you know the vine of life you know reversed he's literally trying to throw that away but the vine is still growing which says to me you know he might be trying to reje reject that uh, um, that theory that you've presented to him but that that seed has been planted and it's growing and you just need to give him time to make sense of it for the divine feminine um you know she really is um I feel like she's gone for a very powerful um, transformation in terms of, um, you know, wh where she's moved forward in this journey. But she is very, very focused on union right now. You know, we see in this, um, in this card, you know, her hand is embracing these candles, this light, um, and, you know, it's lighting up these cups. But these hearts are upside down. Um, they're falling away from the hand, away from the light. And I feel like this divine feminine is very much stuck between a rock and a hard place. I feel like she's confused. She she doesn't want to to let go of the, 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 the journey. She doesn't want to disconnect with it. But I feel like there's a lot of conflict here as well about, you know, should I stick with this? Should I move on? Is it time for me to let this go? Um, and th this really connects with the, the past energies as well, with the two of wands reversed and the hermit reversed, which I, I see the divine feminine having got really tired of this journey of feeling, you know, I've done so much inner work, I've really been shining my inner light and it hasn't worked, it hasn't brought me to union, it hasn't got me where I need to be. And that there's this conflict of the mind here about whether or not she should continue to, to choose this path. And, um, you know, my advice to you is we don't really choose this path. It chooses us. And unfortunately, we, we don't have the option to disconnect from it. So, you know, you need to try and transmute that doubt, that frustration and conflict you're feeling because it doesn't serve you. Um, the, the divine masculine in the past, we really see him truth seeking and trying to embrace transformation. This heart, um, you know, is is... Um, decorated with this beautiful butterfly, again a symbol of transformation which the divine feminine has been going through and the crown is crowned by light um, and this is really about truth seeking and about trying to make sense of it but you know the swords upright shows us that he's still very much trying to make sense of it with his head instead of his heart but with the seven of cups in reverse you know he really has um what's the word, rejected other options of, of a romantic nature. He has chosen you. And with the two of wands in reverse on the, the divine feminine side, you know, this tells me that she's not really choosing him at the moment. Um, and, you know, all of this doubt, this inner conflict, you know, with the connecting energy here is the Ten of Swords. And I think this card is really powerful. You know, we see these swords, these representations of the mental anguish, literally stabbed through the arm. Whereas this pool of water here, surrounded by shells, which represents emotion, you know, it sits beneath it. Um, so both of you right now are too up in your heads with this, trying to rationalise it, trying to look for logical reasons to move away from this connection rather than trusting your hearts and trusting the journey. In the present, we really see our divine masculine making dramatic progress because we've got the high priestess here. Um, and in this card, it's really powerful. Um, we see him literally pushing his hand through the light and looking into the dark and reaching for the mirror. Um, I think this is such a powerful message um, for the twin flame um, reading. You know, this high priestess card, it's really beautiful. And he's really reaching into the dark to, to grasp that mirror, to, to find the truth. 
um, and the truth in his twin. And the high priestess is, of course, also the number two, the number of union. Um, but with the queen of wands reversed in his present, you know, much like this king of wands reversed, he's still struggling. But the difference we see here is that rather than, you know, this massive contrast between dark and light and this rejection, um, you know, this card is, is um, if you look at it upright, we've got this heart here. We've got a light on the outside and a light inside the heart. Um, you know, there's a flower that's blooming. That seed has grown. It's taken form. It, you know, it, it's really starting to um, open and make sense. And the cat for me is really, um, you know, a symbol of that, that understanding. Cats are very, very clever animals. And, you know, they, they have a higher mind, a higher intuition. So he is getting there. He really is getting there. The Divine Feminine, you know, she's really moved into a much more positive mindset and she's much more focused on, you know, um, working through that clarity for the good of her, her Twin Flame connection. Um, and with the Emperor card coming up here, you know, I feel like she is really balancing her yin and yang. You know, yes, we're Divine Feminines. Yes, we need to stand in our Divine Feminine power. But duality is really an important understanding in this journey because... We may not be physically the divine masculine, but we hold them within us. So there's a much greater awareness and acceptance of that and a desire to move forward. That kind of inner conflict that she was feeling has been transmuted. And this divine feminine is really, you know, really in a very good place. Um, she is very much focused on the future and she has faith that union and um, joy can be, can be realized. Um, you know, the Ten of Pentacles is the card of of completion for me this is really and it's really about you know with this rainbow of hope this you know embracing the abundance of her life and knowing that more is to come the connecting energy though is the knight of cups reversed and um, you know with this card I really feel like communication has ground to a halt um, and you mustn't feel disheartened by this you know your, your divine masculine is really very much processing um, so much information right now. I feel like he's been very overwhelmed by it, but he is processing it. He's like recalibrating um, and rebalancing. So this lack of communication, this lack of kind of loving messages or c communication, um, you know, serves serves you both right now. And for the divine feminine, you 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 just need to stay in this strong um, faith that you have right now. It really serves you. Now moving forward into the future, we see some dramatic and wonderful progress. For the Divine Feminine, right underneath the Ten of Pentacles, we've got the Ten of Cups. You know, she is ready for union. She is really stepping into self-love. She is really stepping into, you know, the, the knowing and understanding that even though union may take a while, it's inevitable. It's as inevitable as death. You know, if, if you've met your twin flame, then you have to trust that you will come into union with them in this lifetime. Um, it can take time, but there, there's real comfort in that knowing that it is inevitable. Um, and you just have to keep working on yourself and working um, towards union by doing your part. With the King of Pentacles reverse, though, there is um, there is an element of kind of l letting go of your grounding a little bit and living a bit too much in your heart space. You know, ground yourself. I'm also guided to say, um, I mean, pentacles obviously are represented for the suit here, but for me, what jumped out about this card was protection. Don't allow the fruits of your efforts and the results of your labor to cloud your judgment. There's a crystal ball here, you know. Um, it's not just about connecting with spirit. You need to turn this king of pentacles upright and ground yourself, ground yourself in the, the abundance that, um, and this is in the future, bear in mind, because you're very grounded right now, but we do see you moving into this kind of very romantic um, and um, wistful kind of um, space or headspace and you're really being called to to see um and to remember that you're living in a 3d reality and that you have to balance that you have to stay grounded you have to stay pa um, protected and you have to see the bigger picture which is what that crystal ball refers to for the the um for the the divine masculine we've got this ten of wands here reversed which is about releasing burden and really making a dramatic step forward in this card, we see the gentleman on the phone. And I really feel like 
um, there will be a period of him communicating with you which will really help him to transmute all of this confusion he's been feeling but that it will be short-lived and that you're not to be disheartened um, you know because this will give him massive hope he's going to feel the change in your energy he's going to understand that you really have moved into a space of unconditional love and you know this is going to be hugely beneficial for him and really help to drive you closer towards union um, you know I do see some minor conflict here but actually Arthur stepping into set it's not so much conflict it's kind of hot banter it's a kind of playful flirtation it may feel a bit like games but Arthur's guiding me to tell you that you must take this in a light-hearted way and in, in the spirit that it's, it's intended which is honestly just to have fun I feel like your divine masculine having released all of this heaviness um you know, he, he's just going to want to be a bit more playful and light-hearted and, you know, to build some kind of anticipation and sexual chemistry into this connection and to, to kind of relieve the, the, the heavy feelings that have surrounded it. So I feel like you might initially receive this as, as you know, um, almost slipping back into old patterns and triggers um, and that's not what it is. So just check yourself, you know, pause before responding and try and accept that kind of more playful, banterous communication in the spirit, which it's intended and not as conflict or game playing, because that's really not his intention. It really isn't. It will, it will feel like an imbalance or a wobble, but that's not how, how he, he's intending it. So, you know, perhaps a little bit misguided given the, the depth of the previous conversations, but he's really just trying to lighten the mood. So let's see what you need to know to move forward. Double mission, channeling and uplifting humanity. Longing for home, belonging, the original light workers. What are you being called to journey to? And priestess, how are you being called to step up and lead? So the first one that really stands out for me is this one, because if you look at this card closely and that castle up there, that pink castle, it very much mirrors the image on this Ten of Pentacles card um, of this castle here that, that represents abundance and joy. And, you know, th this is asking, what are you being called to journey to? And I feel like this is a message to stay strong, stay focused on your goal um, but don't forget the journey. You know, the journey is the important part. I feel like a lot of us miss that sometimes when we're on this twin flame journey. We're so focused on the end result that we forget that the journey itself is a gift. It's the journey itself that teaches us um, true love. And, um, you know, arriving at, at, at the goal, at the end goal, at union is just the icing on the cake. So, you know, First of all, you, you, you need to remember that you're on that journey and just, just stay focused. Stay focused on the goal, but enjoy the journey and pre appreciate the present moment. With the double mission, channeling and uplifting humanity, you know, I really feel like um, you're, you're actually coming to the realisation that your twin, whilst he seemed to live in ego before, he's way more spiritual than you gave him credit for. And the more and more these lessons, this learning, the, you know, all the theories and ideologies you've shared with him begin to sink in and grow and bloom, the more he's going to be drawn to spiritual work. You know, it says here quite clearly, this is a double mission in channeling and uplifting humanity and much like I said at the beginning of this video when twins come into union they raise the vibration of the planet just by being in union you don't have to literally do any light work you, you light um, everyone up just by being in union but there is a, a desire here it says here longing for home belonging and the original light workers you know that that to me is just such a beautiful message longing for home is me for me is about, you know, longing for our spiritual home, which is in our hearts, it's love. And, um, you know, you are the original light workers, that's what you're working towards. Priestess coming here on the divine feminine side, how you've been called to step up and lead. I feel like you may have put off actually stepping into light work for some time. Now is the time to do that. You, you, you know, if you've reached this place of um, unconditional self-love, 
and you know you 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 understand this journey and you've really moved into surrender and acceptance you are definitely a powerful voice in the collective to support others who are still on their way there so you know it really is your time it's your time to step up and lead others that, that need your support that need that guidance so if you've been thinking about doing that for a while and it doesn't have to be you know in the way that I'm doing it everyone has different gifts um you know you, you need to find a way that resonates with you um but you're definitely being called you're being called to to contribute to the collective and to help guide others um the connecting energy between the two of you is seeding the light laying foundations and divine plan and again you know this message has come forward to really reinforce your trust in this journey and to remind you that you know it's important it's bigger than ourselves it's bigger than the feminine it's bigger than the masculine it's about um, seeding light it's about spreading light this card's really beautiful and a grandmother of Jesus and we see all these beautiful people here receiving her love and light and you know I feel like this really mirrors this channeling and uplifting humanity card um, that comes in um, on the divine masculine side um, I'm going to pull another couple of oracle cards as well let's use our angels and ancestors So for the Divine Masculine, we have Elder, moving beyond ancestral patterns. And um, for the Divine Feminine, we have White Witch, be the light. Be brave and honest and shift your perception. So it's lovely. So, you know, for the Divine Masculine, I feel like moving beyond ancestral patterns very much refers to problems, not problems, but inner child wounds relating to his parentage, his family, how he was raised and his attitude towards his parents. That's some of the healing he still needs to work through. Um, and remember, you can't do that for him. So while you may be able to bring it to his attention, it's really important to remember that we can't fix our divine masculine. It's not our job to. Um, we can support them, but we can't do that work for them. They need to figure this out for themselves. Um, and with this night card coming up for him, you know, we really see him stepping into a much more courageous and honest outlook. And he needs that. He needs to be brave. He needs to be honest with himself. For me, nights, especially this night, has a sword on it. You know, it's very much about speaking our truth. Um, so I do feel like your divine masculine, this is part of the work he's going to be doing to release this kind of burden of weight that he's been carrying. Um, for the Divine Feminine, you know, White Witch, be the light and shift your perception. Um, Air Guardian obviously refers to um, matters of the mind. Um, so I feel like, you, you know, this also resonates with this Pentacles card that we had. You need to shift your perception from being all up in your head in terms of connecting with spirit and, you know, move, move that to a more earthly, grounded um, outlook. You really need to be grounded. The, the need to be grounded is standing out very much for me for the divine feminine. But remember that you are the light. Be the light. It's time to step into that priestess energy and shine. So I really hope that was helpful today, guys. Please do like, share and subscribe. Let me know your comments in the box below. If you'd like to get a reading from me, you can find that information below. And you can also email me if you need that meditation I mentioned at the beginning um, or any other support. So I look forward to speaking to you all soon. Thank you so much.